Welcome to Zim Talk, the part of the show where we want to hear from Zimbabwean people with real stories to tell. Now, for many Zimbabweans, living in another country like England can be a real lonely place. And whether it's financial issues, emotional issues, or whatever it may be, it's important for people to have a place to go where they can talk to people about their problems and can get real solutions. And that brings in my get today's guest, which is Jenny Mzunza, who runs Aunt Jenny's Lounge. Now, could you tell us a bit more about Aunt Jenny's Lounge? Yes, Aunt Jenny's Lounge is actually um, something that started off my Facebook profile, um, where people would, would come to me, ask me certain things, and, and I would give them, give them answers, lead them to the right place. Uh, like many people didn't know where to go, uh, say, because we have we had so many refugees, not only Zimbabweans, but from Africa. And I would come, I would tell them exactly where to go, where they can get help, because I've done a, a bit of um, pro bono work with the Greater Manchester Immigration Aid Unit. So that's where it all started. And I've, I've been encouraged by so many people to start a page. So that's when I started a page, and it's a page dedicated to all life irritations. So that is Auntie Jenny's Lounge. So could you give us some examples of the kind of problems that people come to Aunt Jenny with? Oh, people come with so many problems. Um, children problems, you know, when you get teenagers, when you get um, like little toddlers, you know, people come asking those things, uh, what to expect when, they having, when they're giving birth. Uh, they also come with marital problems. Uh, they also come with, uh, you know, in time of sorrow. I, I've, I've also helped so many people raise money. You know, when people die in, in foreign land, most of them, they want to be buried back home. And um, I've spearheaded most of the campaigns whereby we actually um, ask the Zimbabwean community and everybody else around us uh, to make a donation uh, from 50p, 5p, or is it $5 or something, depending with where they are. And we give them like um, an account and all the details and everything is so transparent. So Auntie Jenny covers that as well. And now it's expanded from the Facebook page to the radio station. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, it has expanded uh, to the radio station. It became a, a talk show from January uh, 2011. No, July 2011, actually. And then I moved to Zimbabwe Marble Radio in January 2012. So do people call into the station? Do they write in? How does that work? People write, people write in. They write in and uh, they tell me their problems. Like, they say, OK, well, not just personal problems, but they could be, like, issues that affect our community. Uh, there is a saying in Africa that says, a child is raised by the village and uh, charity begins at home. So things like that, people can actually write to me and say, you know what, Auntie Jenny, we feel that we should talk about this issue because this is something that is affecting our community because we want to keep, um, it's good to adopt the British culture, but also to keep our African integrity. You see, things like that. And people write in and we do have a, a call-in session. And when people call in, um, they talk, like you get, I give them advice uh, from what I've learned in life. And you get people calling in from all over the place, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA. I've been surprised by people calling me from Kuwait and, and Dubai, you know, places that you would think, okay, these are not English speaking place, countries and you get people um, from Zimbabwe there and I've had people from South Africa and even South Africans and people from Botswana calling in, trying to like, because African culture is more similar. So they try to say, oh, you see, we're having this same problem in our community. And I think this is a good thing that you're addressing it. We can address it as a nation and we can restore whatever it is that has been lost. Now we were talking before, you've got 19,000 likes on Facebook and now the radio station as well. Is this something that you see continuing to grow? It is growing every day. It's growing every day. And um, there's no limit. Like, to me, it's like they're part of my family. I have 19,000 family members, if you know what I mean. If I include my Facebook friends, there'll be more than 21,000 people. So I, I really enjoy it. But that's quite a lot of responsibility, isn't it? No, no, actually. Um, to me, 
it's natural. I don't see it as a, as a responsibility because if I see it as a responsibility, it will come out as um, a burden, if you know what I mean. I, I, I take it as a calling. Now, we were chatting earlier, and this is actually one of only many things that you do. Could you briefly tell us the other activities you get up to? Um, in my, um, I have um, an LLB owners a year, and I've done a one-year legal practice course, making me a trainee solicitor. So um, I've taken a year out so that I can find myself, because I need to establish Antigenes Lounge and make sure that it's where I want it to be. Because the lounge place, you know, in the house, you get um, the dining room, the kitchen, the bedroom, but the lounge is where everybody else comes in and they sit down and talk as a family or as a community. You know, if you have neighbors, they, they don't come into your bedroom, they come into the lounge and then you talk about whatever it is that's happening. So I want it to grow into uh, some form of charity because I do work with different charity organizations that I do support but I need Antigenes Lounge to be like uh, its own charity standing on its own so this is something that we're working on because I've discovered that there's so many things that you need to do in the UK if you want to register as a charity so that's what we're working on and then there's the hairdressing the DJing <laughs> I'm a, I'm a DJ, like a radio DJ, a radio, a radio personality, a talk show host. I'm also a hairdresser. I'm a mother. Um, I have two sons and a daughter. I adopted a daughter, which means I'm a grandmother as well because I've got two grandchildren. I think one thing our ATV viewers really want to know is where on earth do you get the energy for all this? <laughs> um, I have a great family and I have a very great husband. Yes, I have a very great husband. He supports me in everything. If I want to go somewhere, he's there with me. If I get a call, like in the middle of the night, I remember one time, uh, was it last year or the year before that, somebody had an accident. Uh, somebody ran them over on Chitimu Road and there was a bubble and somebody just said, oh, you know what? I know Auntie Jenny, can you call Auntie Jenny, please? I need them. And I was there, it was like 3 a.m. in the morning and it being a weekend, you know, you know, in, in Manchester, it, 8 o'clock is like daytime to us. So from 8 to 1, we we're having a good time, having a chat with some family members. And when I, when I put the babies to rest and I was about to rest, somebody called me saying, oh, we have an emergency. Somebody's in hospital. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. But I've worked in the nurse field as well. But me just being there helped that family a lot because they had someone to talk to, someone to calm them down, an independent person uh, who could like neutralize the situation. And I'm a bit of a comedian because I, I talk too much. So Well, they do say laughter is the best medicine. Best medicine, that's the best cure and that's the best cure that I give to people every time they come to me. Now you told me before that this incredibly active lifestyle you lead, a lot of it comes down to the upbringing you had. Oh yes. Oh yes, uh, most Zimbabweans will know my grandfather. He was called uh, Segurum Sonza. He did programs similar to Auntie Jenny, what Auntie Jenny is like. He, he would give people wisdom. He was on, um, on the local radio station in Zimbabwe and on TV as well. So most people will know him and that's my grandfather. And my dad um, also helped as well, my mom and dad, because we were raised as children, not as girls or boys, no. And um, you'll be surprised if I have a breakdown, if I have a flat tire, I can change my tire and do that on my own. That's what my dad taught me. I'm also a locksmith in our training because my dad owns a locksmith company. So don't be calling me to pick up kids, no. <laughs> I'm just, I just do things the right way. So. I've done a lot. I've done farming, you know, like proper farming. If you come to my house right now, you'll get a garden uh, where you have green veggies. And finally, what does the future hold for Aunt Jenny? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take advantage of the law and make Aunt Jenny's launch progress because I feel like um, I will speak for the voiceless, if you know what I mean, because um, there's another part that I left as well. I'm a human rights activist. I was ever since I was 16. My dad, mom and dad signed me into this uh, human rights group. 
that was uh, back home in Zimbabwe and I was part of that ever since. So uh, I want to see certain things. I know I'm not going to change the world. I know I cannot do it alone, but if I can change one life, if I can change um, a little girl's life or a little boy's life, you know, that would be very, very rewarding to me. Jenny Vizanza, thank you so much for joining us on ATV. Oh, well, thank you very much, Leon, for having thank me. You.